Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to another video build. So, this video build is going to be of the 24 scale Porsche 911 SCRS from New New. So the uh, Porsche rally car uh, from 1985, I think. So, I was looking forward to this kit for, for ages. Uh, that Porsche 911 rally car iconic for me remember seeing it on the circuit of ireland back in the 80s uh one of my uh all-time favorite drivers billy coleman uh so i managed to get the kit from new new and the decals from reggie model for the billy coleman car itself so uh yeah really pleased to have that combination and this video is going to build it from start to finish so i've managed to condense it all down into a single video uh, mainly because I'm way behind on on video editing so this kit was originally built in April of this year so we're now end of October so you can see how long it's taken me to actually get this done so yeah let's all hang around uh, head on over to the bench and see how I get on with this Porsche 911 SCRS from new new and I'll see you at the end for some final thoughts So there we go, this is it, this is the box. And inside the box there's part and there's the instructions and that's where I am going to start. So starting with the usual, figuring out what parts need to be body colored. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's the main body shell and the front and rear bumpers, rear spoiler and uh, rear spoiler and engine cover. So a little bit of cleanup, usual cleanup using some UMP sanders. Uh, I'm also just cleaning out and scribing out any of the panel lines. I'm not really add, adding any depth. Uh, I'm just using a sharp pointed tool just to clean out any debris from the sanding process. So engine cover and a spoiler get glued together. So there are two parts. Uh, however, there is a seam line. It is on the underside, but it's it's reasonably visible from the rear of the car so using some Revell model filler just to fill in that gap get that gap nicely filled in and once that filler is dry uh, come back with the ump thinny sticks to remove any of the excess filler and get that back to a nice smooth finish so the Revell model filler is a solvent based filler uh, with styrene, it does tend to bond to it, which is quite good. Uh, so once all that's done, that's basically the body prepped on. So I've got some UMP white primer, and that's the base primer for this kit. So everything's going to get about three coats of white primer. All goes down very, very nicely, uh, and even covers over the grey filler line uh, pretty well as well. So once I'm happy that the primer is done and that's been nicely laid down, it's time to start working on the base colors. So the base colors for this come from Zero Paints. Uh, so I've got this, the Rothmans paint set for the Metro I built a while back and still have plenty of white and blue left. So the white is going to be for the white color. Uh, so there's a lacquer paint, zero paints are quite hot, so nice thin coats. Uh, because the white primer went down well, it's about three or four nice light white coats of Zero's white paint. So all the parts get a nice coat of white, even the ones that are going to end up completely blue, uh, just in case it affects any of the tone of the blue paint. Uh, in the next stage when I get onto it. But here's ever, a couple of coats of the white uh, and it's looking, uh, well, very white at this stage. So once that's done, uh, so I make up some very quick templates, uh, taking a photocopy of the decal sheet just to get that demarcation line between the blue and the white. It doesn't have to be perfect because the, the decals obviously cover uh, a couple of different colors, but you want it approximately right so that the decals covered accurately at least. Uh, so that line is set in place, and then I can begin masking uh, using some Tamiya masking tape. So the very thin line is done using 
I think it's one mil uh, masking tape from Tamiya. So once that's done, get all the body completely masked. Also need to make sure you mask any kind of open holes so you don't get any blow paint blow through and bleed onto the white. So starting with the bumper, uh, once again, it's the Zero Paints Blue from their Rothman set. Going to lay down three or four coats of, three or four light coats of this blue paint. Once again, being quite careful because it is quite hot. And you don't want to ruin any of the work so far. But it does lay down quite nicely, as it did when I did the Metro as well. Uh, the colour looks good to me. And just keep on laying down coats to build up that depth of coverage. I think I end up doing about five coats, actually. Five very light coats of this blue. And it all goes down very, very nicely. So because, because of the demarcation, particularly on the front bumper, uh, I decided to leave the bumpers off. In fact, there we go. Monte coat number five. Uh, so I decided to leave the bumpers off. They'll get attached at the end. And as you'll see later on, that did cause some problems. So once that's been set aside to cure for a few minutes, you can carefully remove any of the masking tape. As you can see, I end up with a pretty decent demarcation line. So once that, that's all cured, it's time to move on to the decals. So the decals come from Reggie Model. Uh, so it's a set for Billy Coleman's car from the 1985 Circuit of Ireland. So let's speed up the footage and stick on some background music. Sit back and enjoy. So once all the decals are done and cured, uh, it's time to add a wash to the exterior. So I've gone with quite a dark wash. So that's to make sure it's a little bit darker than the blue. That does end up putting quite a dark color on the white, but that's the kind of trade off you make with strong contrasting colors like dark blue and white. Uh, so it's just the usual case of uh, using a fine line brush and letting the capillary action draw the wash material into any of the panel gaps. Doesn't quite flow as well as on a gloss surface, 
but it does flow pretty well. And cleanup is, is relatively easy. So set aside for about 30 minutes and then come back with uh, some cotton buds soaked in uh, odorless mineral spirit, so Sansador in this case, and then use that to clean up any of the excess wash uh, around the bodywork. So do like to be very careful around the white because you want to make sure you don't leave behind any kind of stains of the wash. Uh, it does show up quite readily on the white paint particularly. And of course, once it's finished with this, this is all going to get sealed under the clear coat. So the clear coat in this case is ProScale 2K, uh, which is a little bit different from other 2Ks. Uh, so the first coat, instead of a tack coat, you're, I'm laying down a first coat, which is a semi-wet coat. So as you can see, I'm laying down quite a bit of material for this first coat. End up with a semi-gloss finish. And that could be set aside for about 10 to 15 minutes. And once I'm happy with that, it's time to come in for the second coat, which is the final full wet coat. So one of the benefits of Pro Scale is that you're only putting down two coats instead of three, like you would with, with some of the other 2Ks, like Gravity or Pro Range. Uh, it is a very thin material although to date i've not suffered any problems with any runs on the 2k or the clear but as you can see i'm laying down a full wet coat making sure there's no orange peel on the body making sure i'm covering all the areas i need to cover and once completed this course can be set aside for a few days to fully cure and while that's curing i can get on and do some of the other parts of the build such as the running gear and drive train so in this case starting with the suspension components removing them from the sprue getting all those parts off and getting them cleaned up using some ump sanding sticks so all i'm trying to do at this stage is just get rid of any of the seam lines and as you can see i've ended up with a bunch of parts which are now all going to be primed in UMP black. So the chassis was originally primed in UMP white. I've now masked off the molded in engine detail and priming that black because that will get a coat of a metallic color in a future step. So while this is a curbside kit, there is a, I suppose, a reasonable amount of detail on the underside of the engine. So it is worth masking it up reasonably accurately. And then of course, there's all the kind of running gear parts, which all get primed in UMP black as well. So a lot of the parts will probably stay in UMP black because the call out is semi-gloss black. Uh, some of them will get done in various metallic colors. You can also start work on the interior tub. Cleaning up any of the seam lines on the seats and on the body parts. So once again, using the UMP sanding sticks to do that job. So the roll cage itself comes in multiple parts. Uh, before painting it, I do like to assemble it because I think it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm dry fitting it into the chassis tub or into the interior tub, not gluing it into the base but just holding it in place securely so I can use some Tamiya Extra Thin on any of the cross members. And that basically pre-assembles the roll cage uh, before I go to paint with it. So just in case of running a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin into the joints on the cross members. And that's nicely pinned together. So once that's set, uh, I can go off and then prime the interior using UMP black. Parts are molded in black, so it only takes a couple of coats. And it's the same for the roll cage as well. Roll cage in this car is black. So that's primed in UMP black. And will probably get left in UMP black. 
because the call out is for a semi-gloss black. Uh, similarly for the seats as well. So all of these get uh, probably at least two coats, maybe three in some cases, once I'm happy with the coverage. So once all those parts have been primed, painted up as necessary, uh, it's time to start assembly of the running gear. So the majority of the parts are just in black, because uh, that was a call out, including the suspension struts, the springs. But as you can see, the engine itself has been painted in a burnt metal color, which I'm not entirely sure about. Uh, I think that was the color call out. But it doesn't look eh, doesn't look brilliant to me, but it's on the underside and it's probably never going to be seen again because I think there's a cover that goes over the engine anyway. So, so not to worry. So rest of the components get uh, added to the underside using some CA glue. Uh, and that puts in all the suspension and running gear parts. So we can then switch to working on some of the interior, uh, adding any of the decals for things like the fire extinguisher, dashboard, dials on the dash. Uh, I was a bit short of PE seat belts, so I've used the kit decals in this case. They don't look too bad, but they're nowhere near as realistic looking as a P belt set. But you work with what you've got, so I've gone with the decals. It's quite a dark interior anyway, so it's not going to be a highly visible part. So I can live with that. So once all that decal work is done, you can start assembling the interior, adding the pedals, adding the gear stick and handbrake lever, and then ultimately adding in the seats themselves. So as you can see, just a little bit of checking of where it's located, pop it into place, bit of CA glue on the end, and that will stay firmly in place. Seats themselves can be popped in then. Once again, using some CA glue. As you can see, got the driver seat and the navigator seat as well. The roll cage can then be added. So as you can see, that was pre-assembled. Uh, from a few minutes ago and that just pops into the locating holes once again using some CA glue. Side cards can then be popped on. And of course once they are in place the steering wheel and dashboard can also be added as well. And that is the complete interior tub. So now switching back to chassis, because uh, brake discs have been uh, relatively detail painted. The calipers themselves are painted in black. And the discs are painted in Alclad steel, I believe. Uh, so there is poly caps which go inside the hubs, a little bit of CA glue, and they can be popped in place on the suspension struts and hubs that were already mounted on the kit. So there is locating tabs to get the orientation correct. But always keep an eye on the instructions and any references to make sure things like the calipers are facing in the correct direction. So the wheels themselves, they were painted white much earlier on. So I'm now just adding a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Silver just onto the, uh, the bolt heads for the wheel studs. And just adds a little bit of detail to those wheels. 
So once I'm happy that that 2K has been fully cured, uh, it's time to flat and polish any of the bodywork that needs it. Uh, so starting with micro mesh 6000, I'll work my way up to 8000 and 12000, uh, making sure I remove any kind of blemishes, any dust or any stray fibers that have gotten caught in the 2K. Uh, on this finish, I've been pretty lucky and almost nothing is in the 2K. It's just a little bit of sanding back just to uh, flatten back that surface finish just a little bit. Of course, on any of the kind of bumper parts, anywhere there's edges, there's all, you always need to be a little bit careful just to make sure you don't risk any burn through. Which at this stage would be rather disastrous for the build. But how's ever, I'm just flatting back all the kind of major surface areas, making sure that there's a nice flat even surface, which which you pretty much get with 2K, but there's always a little bit of kind of flatting back that, that's often needed. So it's been very minimal on this kit because the Pro Scale 2K has performed flawlessly and gone down really, really well. So once that flatting process is finished, it's time to do some polishing using the UMP polishing system. Uh, so I'm already on to the number two polish. It was very minimal compound was used on this kit because the, the finish from the 2K was absolutely spot on. Uh, it's absolutely rock hard as well after curing, absolutely rock hard. Of course, the more it's cured, the less chance you are to get any kind of micro scratches appear on the surface as well. But how's ever, I'm working my way around the kit using the UMP polish, uh, using an old t-shirt as a polishing rag. So just applying the polish, letting it haze off and dry, and then buffing it off. I must say I'm very, very pleased with how this clear coat has come out. So there is a little bit of further painting on the on the bodywork itself. So around the window trims, uh, there's the black rubber seals for the windows. Clear parts themselves also have black surrounds as well, so they'll get masked and painted as well. It's part of this step. So using the uh, Tamiya 1, 2 and 3 mil tape and then filling in using the larger Tamiya tapes where necessary. And of course, detacking the tape on my hand just to make sure it's not quite as sticky. Make sure you don't risk lifting any of the decals or 2K. Now, a fully cured 2K, uh, the masking tape is unlikely to, to damage it, but you'd still need to be a little bit careful, particularly around any edges and where there are decals, because sometimes they can be a little bit weaker, shall we say. So detacking your tape is always a good idea. And then I've got some much wider kip tape as well, uh, which is very useful for filling in the larger areas. So lots of masking, takes about an hour to mask it all. And then about five minutes to paint the black. So I'm using UMP black for the window rubbers. Just slowly building up the black co color. So of course with the UMP black over the 2K, it is an acrylic paint over the 2K finish. So if you do get any issues with bleed through or uh, any areas you missed masking, removing that acrylic paint from the 2K is relatively easy. And as you can see, the windows have been masked off as well. So all the features of the glazing are painted in UMP black as well. So all of that can be set aside to cure for a few minutes. And once... Uh, once at least touch dry anyway, you can start removing the masking tape. I do like to remove the masking tape a little bit earlier in the process. I don't like sat there to fully dry. And of course, a little bit of care removing the masking tape. And 
and as you can see no issues with any bleed through and those black surrounds just add that kind of final level of detail to the bodywork. So it's time to move on to the final assembly. So this was a decision I took the very start of the build to leave the bumpers off separately. Uh, they do have good positive locating points, uh, certainly on the front and rear, wrapping around to the sides, not as not as positive, uh, but there is a little bit of a tab, and that's where a little bit of CA glue has been placed. Uh, so the rear spoiler and engine cover also pop in place. Once again, a little bit of CA glue. And once it cured, that then allows me to add the chassis. So the chassis locating points mount to the bumper bumpers and the bumpers aren't mounted to the bodywork so it is possible to get them in with the bumpers in place however they do put quite a bit of stress on uh, where those components have been glued so the main decision to leave the bumpers off was mainly for the demarcation line at the front which kind of turned out to not be really a problem anyway so I really should have put glued the bumpers on at the start. I definitely would have avoided the fact that inserting the chassis like this has basically caused the sides of the rear bumpers to actually detach. So a little bit of remedial work with some CA glue is required. Uh, so just putting it back onto the join line and using a little bit of CA glue kicker as well, just to accelerate the process and they are secured in place. But I think had that all been done with Tammy extra thin at the very start and just painted as one piece, uh, it would have been much better. But there we go. Not a disaster, just a little bit of a challenge to work through. So with the chassis and interior now in place on the bodywork, uh, the clear parts can be added. Uh, so as is kind of normal for new new kits, they are uh, inserted from the outside. So a little bit of PVA glue into the join areas and those parts can be pushed in place. Now the side windows, it did need a little bit of kind of scraping of some of the clear part just to get a snug fit. Uh, and that was also true getting the chrome headlights and surrounds for the headlights into place as well. But again, that's just kind of standard challenges of putting these kits together. As you can see, the light covers go on absolutely no problem. So yeah, really pleased with how it's all coming together now. So there is a few details going on the outside of the kit, things like wing mirrors, uh, windscreen wipers and the like, and then the wheels can be added. Now the wheels are a little bit too big for this for this scale of kit they are bigger than the original wheels on the car by the looks of it but i can live with it and it's a final polish up and basically this build is complete so we can now head on over to see how the final kit came out and then back to me for final thoughts So there we go, that's the new new 24 scale Porsche 911 SCRS completed. Uh, I am very pleased with how it came out, really pleased with how the clear coat came out. Uh, the Pro Scale 2K was absolutely perfect uh, for this kit. A uh, few issues along the way, I uh, mentioned them during the 
during the vid the build itself uh i think i think if i built it again i'd, I'd glue the bumpers on they don't stop you getting the chassis in uh as you can see i had a little bit of an issue uh kind of squeezing the chassis in with the bumpers that were just glued with super glue didn't quite hold as strong as maybe using tamiya extra thin with the bumpers on at the start main reason i left them off was just mainly for the front bumper because of the demarcation for the blue uh but aside from that i, th I think yeah I i'd say i'm really happy there was a few minor fit issues with some of the clear parts uh again sometimes with the thickness of paint and 2k it can just make tight tolerances you, you need to kind of basically remove a little bit of material just to get the fit perfect to be honest that's not uh that's not a major issue you just need to think about it in advance and make sure uh you're checking for these things uh aside from that it's a fantastic little curbside kit uh yeah i suppose the other the, the other issue i spotted is that the, the wheels themselves they're nice wheels but they are too big they're, they're much bigger uh scale wise than they should be but again replacements can be got for that if you want it i stuck with the kit ones uh and yeah kind of looking at it on the shelf over there i'm uh, really pleased with how that came out and that will eventually sit nicely, probably next to the Rothman 6R4, which is somewhere up there. Uh, so yeah, so all in all, really happy with how this came out. So thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video and feel free to leave a comment as well. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. You've had a full video build from me. That's enough uh of listening to me for anybody really so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all very very soon in hopefully a bench update which will come up in about a week's time so stand by for that uh see you all very very soon bye bye